Acid catalyzed hydration is a type of addition reaction. In addition reactions, we are adding a molecule to an alkene. And in the acid catalyzed hydration reaction, the molecule that we are adding to the alkene is water. We're adding it, I like to think about it as H and OH because we are adding the water in two portions. One portion is the hydrogen and the other portion is the OH. Acid catalyst um, just tells us that this reaction requires the presence of an acid for it to work. And I'm going to illustrate the acid catalyzed reaction with this particular set of molecules. Obviously, this is our alkene, and this is the reagent that I'm using for the acid catalyzed hydration. And I first want to talk about the um, D symbol that I have here in this particular molecule. D is the symbol for deuterium, which is just an isotope of hydrogen. It is pretty common for chemistry teachers to use deuterium instead of hydrogen in reactions like this because it's one way for us to really clearly illustrate where the hydrogens, or in this case the deuteriums, end up in the product molecule. When we're just using the regular symbol for hydrogen, sometimes these hydrogens that we're adding get lost among the hydrogens that were already present on the molecule. So D3O+, plus, which was what we're working with in this case, is the same thing as H3O+. Plus. It's just a specific isotope of the hydrogen uh, atom. So for this reaction, we're using D3O plus as the acid catalyst and also as the reagent. In order for me to draw this mechanism, I want to redraw the D3O plus in its Lewis structure. It makes it a little bit easier to work with for the mechanism. And this mechanism is very similar to the hydrohalogenation mechanism that I showed in the last set of videos. We're gonna start by the electrons in the double bond reaching out and attacking any one of the hydrogens or deuterium. So whether this is a hydrogen or whether it's a deuterium, the double bond is gonna grab one of those atoms and that is going to cause the hydrogen oxygen bond to break or the deuterium oxygen bond to break. And when that happens, we are going to get a product where we have converted the carbon-carbon double bond to a single bond, and this deuterium that we attacked with the double bond is going to be bonded to either one of these two carbons. Maybe it's going to go here, or maybe it's going to go here. This reaction is going to follow Markovnikov's rule, just like we would expect. We want the deuterium to add itself to this carbon or to this carbon in such a way that the most stable carbocation is formed. Markovnikov's rule tells us that the hydrogen or deuterium is going to add itself to the carbon that has the most hydrogens already present. This carbon has two hydrogen present, which means that the deuterium will go right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw the other hydrogens in just so that we know where they are. I'll draw them in over here as well. And here is the intermediate that we have formed. Now it's always important whenever you form a carbocation intermediate, we should attempt to rearrange that, to see if we can form something that's more stable. This particular carbocation, C plus is bonded to two carbons, so it's a secondary carbocation. If we move the positive charge over onto this carbon, it would be tertiary over here, bonded to three carbons. So let's take the hydrogen from that carbon and let's shift it over to form a more stable carbocation. So now we have an intermediate that looks like this. 
and our carbocation is stable and we're ready to move on to the next step of the reaction. So very much like our hydrohalogenation reaction, we are now going to take the leftovers, the part that was um, left over after the first step, which is water or D2O in this case, water with deuterium. And the lone pair of electrons on that D2O is going to attack the positive charge on our carbocation. So we will end up with this guy. I'm going to draw these hydrogens in. I'm going to stop drawing these hydrogens here because it just doesn't make sense to me anymore. And we have formed in this step the lone pair of electrons were used to form this bond to carbon. So the bond to carbon is between carbon and the oxygen of the D2O. Oxygen still has one lone pair of electrons left. And because it has three bonds, it has a positive formal charge. This reaction is almost over. What we need to do now is deal with the positive charge on this oxygen. So we are going to bring in some sort of substance. This is typically going to be a second water molecule. So this reaction is usually done with an excess of water. We've got extra water present. And this extra water molecule is going to use a lone pair of electrons to grab either one of the hydrogen or deuterium grab either one of them, break the deuterium-oxygen bond to move another lone pair of electrons onto that oxygen. So when that is finished, we will end up with this guy right here looking like this beautiful molecule. So this is the mechanism for acid catalyzed hydration, let's write down some of the conditions or things that you need to keep in mind when you're working on this type of reaction. Number one, we are going to follow Markovnikov's rule. In the first step, when we are adding the hydrogen, we are going to follow Markovnikov's rule because that allows us to form the most stable carbocation. Number two, rearrange that carbocation. If possible, remember it's not always possible to do a carbocation rearrangement, but whenever possible, rearrange it. Number three, which didn't actually apply in this reaction. When the reaction is done, um, every carbon atom that you worked with, which in this case we've worked on all three of these carbons, you do want to look at those carbon atoms and ask yourself whether or not any of them became chiral. If they did become chiral, we will produce a racemic mixture of products. So this reaction is very much like hydrohalogenation, all the same types of conditions. Now, one last thing that I want to talk about with acid catalyzed hydration is that there are many different ways to write the reactant. D3O plus is just one way that we can write the reactants. So we could have H3O plus or D3O plus, which is just an isotope version of that. You could see somebody write H2O comma H plus. So that is really kind of the same thing. There's a total of three hydrogens and an oxygen and a positive charge. And maybe you would see that written as deuterium as well. Probably not as common, D2O comma D plus, that sort of a thing. You could also see the reagents written as H2O comma H2SO4. Sulfuric acid is the most common acid that is used to catalyze this reaction, so sometimes it's written in that format. And last but not least, you might see this written as dilute or sometimes just DIL abbreviation sulfuric acid, H2SO4, dilute sulfuric acid, which means sulfuric acid that has had water added to it. 
So you could see the acid catalyst in any one of these versions, recognize that they're all saying the same thing. Oh, there is actually even one more thing that I want to point out. Notice that in this reaction, I drew equilibrium arrows for most of the steps. And that is because this reaction actually does exist in equilibrium. Because it exists in equilibrium, we can use Le Chatelier's principle, which you learned about in general chemistry, to drive the reaction either to the left or to the right. So if we want this reaction to proceed to the left, which we typically do, then we will want to have an excess of water present because water is a reactant over here and having an excess of water pushes the position of equilibrium to the right. So excess of water Uh, causes us to form products, pushing the reaction from the alkene to this would be an alcohol. It is possible to move the reaction backwards to convert this alcohol backwards to an alkene. And if we want the reaction to go in the reverse direction, we would use concentrated acid to run the reaction in reverse. Now we won't see, we won't study the reaction going in reverse for quite a while. We won't talk about it until we, we really study alcohols as a functional group, but just sort of keep that in the back of your mind that the reaction can go forward if we're using dilute acid and it can go backwards if we're using concentrated acid.